another possible cause, uh, another possible type, okay, of uh, tetanus is uh, what we call the cephalic tetanus. All right, the cephalic tetanus. And um, under the cephalic tetanus, we'll be talking about it from the definition. We we'll talk about the symptoms. Uh, we we'll talk about the diagnosis. We we'll talk about the treatment. We talk about the possible complications if this disease condition is left unmanaged for a long period. Okay, so for this cephalic tetanus, we said that it's actually it's actually a rare. Okay, it's rare but severe. Okay, it's a rare but severe form of tetanus, which is accounting for just about what one to two percent of the total tetanus cases. Now, it occurs when the tetanus bacteria actually enters the body through a wound on the head or face. All right. And the possible things that can cause this tetanus uh, bacteria to actually enter the, uh, the face or head could be that there was head trauma. It could be that there was some facial lacerations. It could be that there was some autogenic infections like infections from the middle air now spreading to other parts. It could be that there's inflammation of the sinuses. That's what sinusitis. It could be that there was some dental infections. Okay. So talking about the symptoms that could result from this cephalic tetanus, uh, you have tetanus, uh, trismus. Sorry, trismus is basically you having difficulties in closing back your jaw. So your mouth can be permanently open like this. Like they froze it, okay? Can't be able to close it back. There could be facial spasms, just like you see here, all right? Uh, there could be rigidity of the facial muscles, the same thing, all right? There could be drooping of the eyelids, that's when it's getting advanced. There could be difficulty swelling, swallowing, all right? As muscles of the neck are kind of like going down. There could be hoarseness of voice. There could be somewhat respiratory failure right so talking about the diagnosis that's basically how to confirm that this medical condition actually exists you might want to do some clinical examination you might want to do some laboratory tests like what blood work or wound culture you might want to do some imaging studies like ct scan mri scan and the rest then treatment um immediate hospitalization of the individual Take the individual to the hospital ASAP. Uh, you could administer some tetanus immunoglobin. You could do some wound debridement and cleaning. You could do some administer some antibiotics, all right, just to tackle the infections. And some of the antibiotics could be metronidazole, could be penicillin, all right. They could also administer some muscle relaxant because there's muscle spasm. There's um, what is it? there's rigidity, okay. So you might want to administer some muscle relaxant and sedatives. Then respiratory support. Then you might also want to do surgery, which is actually like coming last. So it's actually like the last option. So we we'll say that uh, primarily the treatment of this is just medical. Okay. So talking about the complications, if left untreated, it can spread to cause what respiratory failure because what we we'll say that there's weakness in the trachea. In the upper respiratory tract and it's causing some problems okay this could also lead to a cardiac arrest it could lead to pneumonia it could lead to sepsis where it's infection of the blood it could lead to inflammation of the meninges that has meningitis it could lead to brain abscess all right so those are what the possible things that you guys need to know about anything called what cephalic tetanus all right see you guys pretty soon